Okay. Are we back on? All right. Uh, okay, the committee now has before it uh, Clara versus the Salt Lake City School District. Am I correct? All right. I think both of you were here when I read the procedures about the time frame and kind of have an idea of the process. So I won't go through those again. I think um, <coughs> both parties have provided additional information. Understand, though, that according to statute and our administrative rules, we need to receive these beforehand. So while we'll do our best, it's not an argument that we can entirely depend on because we have not had time to, to thoroughly read these or examine these. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we'll begin the hearing with five minute opening statements. Uh, beginning with the petitioner, Mr. Claret, and if you would please introduce yourself into the microphone okay. for the record before you start. All right. My name is Michael Claret. I'm a member of the Board of Education here in Salt Lake City. All right. Okay. All right. And so I just passed out two additional documents. One is just a response that I received from a, a complaint I filed with the U.S. Department of Education and Office of Civil Rights, and that's just addressing the issue in our school district that we have deployed uh, Salt Lake City police officers full time in schools that have a, a large ethnic or have a majority ethnic minority population, but we don't do so in other parts of the district. And then the other one I, I passed out was a picture of me in the Tribune uh, dressed as a bandito because earlier this year the school board president had um, assigned a police officer to guard me because she was offended by a phone conversation that we had. And so the, the basis of my grandma request has to do with this information is that I'm in the, in the process of wanting to form policy that would, that, that would not allow the school district to put police officers on, on people of color or students of color, adults or poor students. And so when I, what happened was in this issue with the police officer at the school board, I come to a school board meeting and he's there guarding me and we get told why. And then three meetings later, he's not there. So I asked the, the school administration, what changed? Why, does he, why did he leave? And they, won't, they wouldn't tell me. And, and I want to know why he left, because I can duplicate that in the classroom in terms of policy. And, and so I did a grammar request. And on uh, the 29th of April, I did a grammar request. And then um, I asked that it was in reference to the deployment of Salt Lake City police officers and their subsequent removal from the Board of Education meeting. And then on uh, May 12th, I was given a denial, a partial denial, and, and it says here that, and this is from the legal counsel, Christina Kendall, and she says, records that have not been provided are protected pursuant to Utah Code 63G-2-305 because the records are subject to attorney-client privilege. And then the, in my subsequent appeal, the same thing, uh, the, the uh, appeals uh, chief administrative officer who's the school board uh, business administrator says, moreover, you have provided no statutory or legal reference to support your claim that you're entitled um, by law to inspect the confidential attorney-client privilege communications. And then she says here accordingly that I can also appeal to you guys, which I did. One thing I want to point out is that on May 13th, uh, before I did the appeal to your office, um, and I mailed this in a letter to you on, um, um, I think on Friday, in one of the footnotes, and I think in that letter it's footnote number four, um, I did get a copy of a letter um, that, that's, that's, well, I'm sorry, before I, I say that, one of the things is that, that when I asked in the email um, who the attorney client privilege was for uh, prior to doing my, my appeal, um, the school board attorney said that it, the privilege is between her and the administration. And so that's what I base my appeal on, that, that I don't believe that, the, that if I'm the elected official, one of seven, that has oversight for the school district, two employees can't claim that they have attorney-client privilege and keep information from me that then don't allow me to make, uh, don't allow me to craft uh, policy and make decisions or budgetary issues as, as I'm was elected to do. So that's what I did, that's what the appeal was based on. And then uh, this Saturday, um, you know, it looks like the appeal, we knew in June, uh, June 8th, I received a letter that, that or, or I, it was told in June that 
the appeal would happen today. And then uh, this Saturday, I get two letters from two different attorneys telling me that, okay, here's a document and drop your, your hearing. And so the reason I, I, you know, they claimed that the doc, so the document they sent me is an email from um, the school district's attorney to another board member. And the board, as I point out in a letter I just mailed, we have our own attorney. So she's not the attorney for the board, but she's saying that that's the, that's the email they were withholding. Um, and so you couldn't have claimed privilege on that. So I'm asking what is the, the document that she said was privileged which was a uh, communication between her and the administration. I haven't seen that yet, so that's why I'm here. All right, so to clarify, uh, your request, what you believe is that the record they provided is not the record that they were talking about because of the attorney-client privilege and who the attorney was representing. Is that clear? Is yes. that correct? I mean, all right. Okay, if you could please introduce yourself for the record and have five minute opening yes, statement. Yes, thank you. I am Joan Andrews and I'm here on behalf of Salt Lake City School District. Um, and uh, the fundamental position here is that the appeal is moot. Now, uh, in fact, uh, we, Ms. Christina Kendall, who is the school district's director of law and policy, and who is an attorney, my name is Pastor Clark. She did send. Can I ask you to pull that closer and talk louder? Because you have a very soft voice. And you have it recorded. Sorry, I will do my best to project. So, um, she did in fact send correspondence to Mr. Clara uh, on Friday of last week, providing the one record that had previously been held withheld on the basis of the attorney-client privilege. So uh, clearly, um, Mr. Clara believes that there are additional or different documents, uh, but I have come with an affidavit simply uh, with the expectation that perhaps the, the statements in the, in the letter might uh, not be sufficient. So uh, what we have is, is a sworn affidavit from Ms. Kimball saying that it is the sole document that was withheld, that has been provided, and uh, there is therefore no longer any case or controversy capable of adjudication by this committee. So uh, really anything else that the committee would want to say or address would be simply advisory and uh, I don't believe that it's the, the uh, purpose of the committee it should be limited to addressing real cases and controversies. So our position is that the appeal is moot and would respectfully request that it be dismissed. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, <laughs> we're in an informal group. Uh, so, Mr. An uh, Mr. Clara, um, you have a 20 minute uh, period where you can provide testimony, evidence, but um, the statement is of the, from the governmental entity that that is the record that they were talking about, whether or not your issue about them not having, not, the, not it being an appropriate representative of the governmental entity at the time. So you have 20 minutes, but we'd like you to perhaps Oh, perhaps for, uh, keep it specific to um, what other information or evidence that you might have that there is an additional additional record that's being withheld. Okay. Does that make sense yes. to you? I'm trying to Absolutely. Do we have a copy of the affidavit that's been submitted? It's the one that she just gave today. <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. Yes, yes. no, it's the, one it's the one other one. This one right here. Staple. Staple. No. Oh, here it is. Okay, this is it. Okay. And did you get this as well, Mr. Clark? Did you? Yes, ma'am. I did. So we have the affidavit. That's the one that we haven't had time to thoroughly look at. I don't know if we should take the time to thoroughly look at it, but what do you well, think? Well, you know, they're saying there's no case of controversy. They're it's saying basically a motion to dismiss. You know, they're saying there's no case of controversy. I they're mean, saying it's basically a motion to dismiss the case. They are asking have... for a motion to dismiss but that he did not receive this beforehand. 
and therefore his argument was that there is an additional document. I'm going to explain the whole thing just so it's on the record. Sure. That there is an additional document, but that would be have to be the, the information here because you, our administrative rule says that mm -hmm. given that if there is no rec other record, the petitioner must provide evidence that there is an additional record that could possibly exist. He has not had the time to be able to do that because we're receiving this today. So what I'm going to say is that in his 20 minutes, that would have to, do you, do you understand where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. That would have to be the discussion that, that it would be that this is, not this, the other one, the email thread. She gave that to me when, when, when we came here. So I did have time, I have had time you to have had it. time to. Yes. So that would be what we would ask. Right. Is that the governmental entity has said that they're all records responsive to your request have been provided. So we are here saying, well, everything has been provided, but the petitioner now has the responsibility right. to say that, no, there is something else. Right. And that, that, and that generally comes before. Uh -huh. and, and typically the, the committee has went ahead and voted on that. We're yeah. saying, we're convinced that there are no other records that would be responsive to the request that all records have been given, and therefore there are no issues for the committee. Right. Or say, well, there could be a question of fact on this, and we're not sure, and let's go forward on the other issues. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm saying. I'm saying that he's generally the petitioners have the ability to beforehand say that yes, I do have evidence that there is an additional document existent, but that didn't take place. So I think he has should have the opportunity sure. to Absolutely. do that now, so that we and then it would be a motion to dismiss now. So that's what I'm asking of you is to make a discussion specific to that, is that you right. provided the affidavit, David, that this this was the record that right. they withheld. So in your mind, and it has to be pretty substantial for us to consider, right. what is the other record that you think still exists? Okay. Well, based on you know past history as, a, as an elected official, you know I shouldn't even have to do grandma on, on the very agency I have oversight for, but I have had to. And so in my initial appeal to you guys, I point out that the attorney for the school board, um, John Robson, he was our prior one, he says that when I do a grandma request, and he told the district this, that in my position as a board member, that I have the ability to review protected and private information. And then this legal, this uh, our director of legal services for the school district, she has provided me grandma requests uh, prior to this, and, sh and this is the language she uses, there was, uh, and I cite two different ones in, in my appeal to you guys, where she says that, um, as I have done, in, she says, as I have done in prior responses to your grammar request, you have been provided with both public and protected information. Obviously, as a board member, you're entitled to view documents not available to the general public. But all protected information that is being provided to you as a board member must be kept and maintained in a confidential manner. And then, and then another, all the other uh, requests, I get public information and protected information. Then on this one. I get told, well, we're not giving it to you at all because it's attorney-client privilege. And again, it was footnote number nine in the letter I mailed uh, on Thursday or Friday. In this email that's dated May 13th, which is in conflict with this affidavit that I was just given today, this affidavit I'm given today doesn't match her explanation that she gave me on, on uh, May 13th. She says, accordingly, the privilege protects the disclosure of any communications that I have with district administrators and employees. So the document that they gave me on Saturday is not between her and, and, a, uh, and an administrator that she claims she has privilege that I would have argued anyways, but now she's saying on Saturday I get in the mail this letter that says, oh, here's a document, but that document that they gave me is from her to another board member, which she could have never claimed privilege because the board has its own attorney. So. I'm just saying that the affidavit that we're given today does not match the explanation. That, that's why I'm believing that there either is another document or then I guess we have to conclude that she lied um, and was deceptive in, on May and, and was trying to use this as a way to withhold information from me. Or they decided that she
she was just wrong <laughs> and gave it to you. Well, she's the one making the decision. She's the legal counsel. She's an attorney. And right now it looks like she lied on, on May 13th. If, if they're saying there absolutely is no other document, then, then you know, I'll have to take this up in another venue. The fact that she lied, you know, and, and so had I not appealed this, I would have just been left with a deception and I would have never known that, that and, and, and it's odd that this appeal, we knew in June this was happening, but in Saturday, four days before the, the, the appeal, I get a letter in the mail. So this is just all very strange to me that, you know, and the district now has employed three attorneys on this issue. All right, so actually you know. what I'm hearing you say, see if I'm restating this correctly. Um, you are a board member mm -hmm. and the attorney uh, for the administration who, with whom the, you have your own attorney. The school board does, yes. School board has your own attorney. This, Krista. Christina Chris, Kendall. I guess I better put mm -hmm. on my glasses. Is an attorney for the Salt Lake School District. Right. Now, in the communication that you received, it was between the attorney and a board member. Mm -hmm. And therefore, your statement is that it couldn't have been the one because attorney client privileged because it was, was with a board member and the board has its own attorney. Right. But was the attorney, I guess I don't remember, do we have a copy of the email thread in our documentation? I but re, re, that doesn't matter really. Uh, regardless, so, but was the, so the attorney may have been representing, representing the administration Right. In communication with the board, so whether or not was it she was an attorney for the board is irrelevant because she was a she was representing the administration in communication with a member of the board. Now well, she was just okay in the email. Right, that would be the argument. I mean, she was again. She wasn't acting as a represent re, representative of the of the board in her communication. That's correct. She was she acting couldn't. as an, a representative. Of the school district, right. she's the school district, That's, yeah. and so the school district communication was with the board member. Now, your argument that as a board member, you have a right to communications that go to the board, I think is maybe a little bit different, but. Um, well, that's just how they've done it in the past. Yes, that's how they've they, done it in the past, and know, I can the, see the, actually there's another undercurrent issue here. It's probably not records related. Oh, clearly. That, but this coming up in a records issue. And so the fact that they were, uh, Christina was representing the administration and viewing it as not communicating with the board as a whole, but as a board member individually. And therefore they classified it as protected and then. Privilege, which it privilege. wouldn't have been though, I don't so I, I, I think So I think, I think we got an understanding that this is, there's something else more um so as an individual board member received was the communication was only to one board member the email yes well it was to heather who was a board member and then she signed it kk i don't see it here and and so then that's a document they gave me on saturday okay which doesn't again doesn't fit the description of the document and on may 13th she says she was withholding well, I think they were withholding it as privileged in their instances as Christina as an attorney with the board. That's board actually member. right. You've got a point. So I think there's a different issue. I think the issue then is whether they incorrectly classified it, which the committee might have considered. But now that it's been released, released. it's been released. <laughs> So, yeah, but I don't know. I get, yeah, because I'm just I, finding out now that they're mm -hmm. saying there's one document. Right. And so I'm just, well, then, you know, mm -hmm. we're probably going to be here again then because if they're going to now invoke, you know, attorney-client privilege between two employees that, mm -hmm. that technically work for me, that's, you know. And I think the, you have a point there mm -hmm. that would have been the argument for the release of this This. That's what I came document. prepared for until Saturday. But now Saturday. that it's been released, so I can see, so... Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, you, you do. I can. Well, see. it's just difficult to um, 
I mean, I can understand your argument that there, there must be another um, document out there, but it's hard to prove a negative. I mean, I, I, we don't know what it would look like or do we? I mean, well, you have a other than she says a, like. accordingly, when I, when, she, when I got denied based on attorney-client privilege, which I thought was strange because, again, mm -hmm. it's a protected document. You've given me protected documents before, right. and the school board attorney said that I could have a, a protected documents or they were required to produce those for me, and I would have to maintain them or face right. penalties, right. Right? right? So and then in this case, when she does deny it, and I said, who's the attorney and who's the client? She says, accordingly, the privilege protects from disclosure any communications that I have with district administrators and employees. Mm -hmm. So when I so when I got when they when I'm reading her letter on Saturday it says, okay, here's a document, I'm expecting to see something between her and the superintendent. And indeed what I see is a letter between her and another board member, which there's no way she no, could. Just, just, well well we'll get back to you, okay? I'm, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm very sorry. Yes. Get relaxed and yes, you'll have your opportunity to respond. I'm sorry. So, um, so your question mm -hmm. is who it remains? Who was ha uh, who was the correspondence between? Right, but we're and on the same we, page. If we and if we get an answer to that, then you'll be satisfied. Right, or if we conclude that that the document I was given on Saturday through the mail, if that really is a document, then you know, then they were being deceptive back in May about this communication. I mean, is there any other question? I, I guess the only question I would have is, I mean, if you suspect that there is another document, is that because of the way the, the language was mm -hmm. addressed in, in May? Yes. Mm -hmm. But you don't know, there's no, nothing else that you suspect is in that document. You don't have a, a suspicion about what the document might be. Yeah, I was just taking them for their right. word. It was odd that they were actually not even giving it to me because, like, you know, again, they've done that in the past and and have given me stuff in the past. So it was odd that this one wasn't for this reason, and then even odder that it doesn't fit the description of what they, what she claimed. Did you have a question? Mm -hmm. oh, all right. Okay, thank you very much. Now you may have. <laughs> thank you, and again, nice. I, my apologies. <laughs> I, I just wanted, first of all, to, to correct what might have come across uh, as an implication that, that there were no district administrators on the email that was produced. The email that was produced was between the district's director of law and policy, Ms. Kindle, the board president, the business administrator, the assistant superintendent over human resources, and uh, the board's outside counsel. So there, there were a host of administrators and two attorneys on the email, both of whom act in representative capacities for the district and the board, and where they very often have a shared privilege, common interest privilege, even though you might occasionally classify them as separate things. So there's, there's a host of issues surrounding the scope of the attorney-client privilege and what Mr. Clara is entitled to in his capacity as a board member that are not relevant here today. It might be the case we have to cross that bridge at some point in the future. Um, but there was no misrepresentation by Ms. Kindle in her May 13th explanation of why she had originally characterized the email being withheld as attorney-client privilege. She was asked for an explanation of the basis of that privilege. Subsequently, a decision was made to turn over that document. Okay. The point was, this has been mooted, mm -hmm. it's no longer relevant, there's no live case or contest. Okay. okay. All right. So, um, I th think we could consider actually the motion to dismiss or. Um, do I need to give him another five minutes? Or, or do you have anything else you want to yes. add? Okay. <laughs> well, because I'm just hearing this explanation okay. now right. that you're saying, else to add? and the email. Unless we're talking about two different emails, but the email that they produced on Saturday, it's from Christina Kendall 
and, and, and it's to Heather, who's the other board member. And she says, Heather, my thoughts are, and she is, is, is talking to Heather. And then she signs it KK. And, you know, the other odd thing to me is that I have, I have one grammar request that was a thousand emails. And there were numerous emails in there that were between uh, this attorney, the school district attorney and other board members and the administration and stuff. And those were never classified as attorney client privilege. And so it's, it's to Heather, but in the header, who are the parties that it goes to? Then on the email, they have they have multiple people on right. it. Right. Okay. Right. That's what I think okay. that's, that's, she's, that's what I think she's right. saying. And, and I'm just saying that that was never invoked before. I mean, I got, you know, other grammar requests that, that were fulfilled with that. And, and I guess I have to, you know, the next grammar request I'll do, I'll see if they react like they were the last 10 times, or if this gets made up again that, you know, so, so what they're claiming now is that any, you know, I guess what I'm, what I'm, what I guess I can conclude now is that any email then that's going to be between this, this school district attorney and any administrator, they're going to claim it's attorney client privilege. You know, so no, apparently not because they've reassessed. Well, well, no, I, I, mean, no, we'll say, I think we're going. I think we're I going around now, so okay. I think it's okay. I but think. that's stuff to be discussed in the future. Yeah. Yep. And unfortunately, I don't think we have a role to punish anyone here. Our role is simply to make sure that records eventually come to light, right. and the records have eventually come to light. So I would mm -hmm. move that we dismiss the case. Right. But let, let me okay. just say, no, I, what, I, I thought I had five minutes. Oh, okay. You can yeah. have five minutes. So, so I just want to say I agree with everything you just said, but understand I'm learning things just as you are from what she's telling me. So they were not forthright with me, and if, and if I'm to believe their explanation that they gave today, that's fine for your purposes. I recognize that, but I was definitely deceived early on in this process, and you know, it took three attorneys to to make the deception, and then now to bring it to light. So I appreciate you know the role that you guys have because now I know. At least this version of the truth that they've given, and I can, yeah. I can react to that. Then thank and, you. And, and that's our role, and yep. I'm glad to see it works. It does. Thank yeah. you. All right. So, um, I did. You want to make a motion? I make a motion to dismiss. All right. Is there a second? A second. Second, Holly. Okay. I'd like to to add something. And attorney-client privilege is a difficult issue. And it comes before us in many different forms, um, many different times. Um, Marie is right in the fact that it's not before us today, but it, a lot of different types of arguments have been made for attorney-client privilege. So it's not an unusual argument to hear pretty much anything on, on an attorney-client privilege. I think you're right. I think it's probably a, a future case since the record has been provided. Yeah, and you, you might want to review the cases that we've had, uh, mm -hmm. dealt with attorney client and the court on cases your next well. grammar request. And the court cases. I think as that well. would be very helpful. Which is SUA versus? SUA is the SUA. big one where it discusses uh, the gold standard and what attorney gold client standard privileges. Gold attorney client privilege. Yeah. So, any further discussion? No? Okay, all those in favor to dismiss? <laughs> that one I did say wrong. Dismiss? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? None? Okay. Um, an order will, well, an order yeah, will be issued will in seven order. days, and you do have 30 days to, to after that. Um, no, an order will be drafted and then issued, and then you have 30 days in, in order to be able to appeal to district court. And and again, so. just the clarification, uh, the reason for the, the uh, motion to dismiss and for the granting of it is that there is no record That's right. uh, to be provided that uh, the committee is convinced, based upon the evidence presented, that um, all records uh, pursuant to this request have already been provided. Provided, right. Okay. Thank you. But thank you for coming and visiting with us. Hope you enjoyed your time here. Thank you for your time. Good job. Good job. Did you get a copy of all these for? Um, I, did not get a copy. Yeah. I told her I'd give her mine back.